good morning. So, first, apologies if there's a annoying hum or anything. It's still chilly mornings here in New Zealand. Um, so I've got the aircon running to get some heat. But um, I also haven't turned on noise gates or anything for my microphone yet. So uh, it's probably coming straight through. Um, so what am I streaming? Uh... At the end of this month, I have a presentation about toast notifications that is going to rely on a feature that I haven't put into Burnt Toast yet. And I've been sort of sitting on adding that feature because um, I thought it would be good to stream it. So uh, here we are. Um, although we're probably not going to get to that specific feature today um, we might plan it out um, today's more about sort of testing that my stream actually stays up that my PC doesn't crash um, all of that sort of stuff so I'm in burnt toast I do have an issue that I want to fix today which is issue number 111 on the PowerShell repo. Um, so in the last version of Burnt Toast, I made a change so that um, basically when you use an image with Burnt Toast, it tries to cache a copy of it in your temp directory um, which is all well and good until you try using stuff like GIFs from Giphy where they're all named identical um, and then you end up getting the wrong GIF when you're trying to use those from, directly from the internet um, so I made a change which allowed that but then it looks like that change is broken using UNC paths so, I need to go and fix that. Um, right. And I have a cat in the background going nuts. Um, so, image stuff is handled in two places new BT image and there's also uh, optimized BT image source and I believe what we're looking for is under here because this is this is what's normalizing the path or well, not normalizing it's what's grabbing a copy and storing it on your local hard drive and I believe what we did, yeah, was change any. So what we were doing was changing a slash or um, colon to a dash to make it uh, work locally. And what we also need to include is backslash whatever way around that slash is but it also needs to be escaped because it's the escape character for a regex expression and if I'm not mistaken that's just thinking it through in my head that should solve the issue What am I doing? 
Let's give it a shot and see what it does. So I did have a path ready to go that I hope works. File on a, on a UNC path. And in theory, well, I didn't think that part through, did I? When uh, setting up the stream. Hmm. <laughs> So of course, toast notifications show on your primary display. Which means... I'm going to need to put that up there. And that down there. See, now this is part of testing the stream. <laughs> So, toast notifications only show on the primary screen, which means I need my primary screen to be the one you're actually seeing. <laughs> which, <laughs> yeah, like I said, didn't think through, didn't think that through. So there we go. That's a GIF that's coming from my uh, UNC path, meaning that change worked. Just to make sure that we actually made a change that was needed. Let's go and even have installed huh, I don't even have my own module installed okay so let's go ahead and install burnt toast You can tell this is a uh, brand new build, and I don't have any everything reinstalled again. Cool. So that's the default notification. Now, if we do our path and cool. So that was the behaviour that people were seeing before is. Basically, it's trying to copy the file um, where it thinks the file should be and no, where it's trying to put the file isn't a valid um, location because it's trying to retain, retain those slashes from the UNC path. Whereas now... Uh, if I have a look at where it ended up, it is just in there, okay. And we'll do this in File Explorer just so it's easy to see. We have our cached file. So in place of slashes we've got dashes and everything's fine. 
So now, say this was a bigger GIF than 9 kilobytes, um, we would only have to download it once. Now there's an extra case here that I want to cover, which is what if what if you do want to refresh something in the same location with the same name? Say you've dropped a new logo onto your blog or something and you want that new logo. Um, at the moment, if it had the same name, uh, you'd be stuck with the original one. So I want to add a way to force a refresh or ignore cache. So which way around do I do that? I'm going to call it on the private function. Uh, not there though. On the private function I'm going to call it force refresh. So I'm weighing up, trying to just write over the top of it, or explicitly... And I realise now... I'm going to have to work out a bit of layout for, for all the elements on stream. do two tests here just in case what I do doesn't a hundred percent work in here is an or so it's either the file doesn't exist or we're telling it to refresh and I'll check a force on if there is a force on invoke group request no there's not so with those two I'm hoping they just overwrite whatever's there. Testing the copy item one's fairly simple. In fact, let's do that. Before and after. So, I need to go and find myself a picture. Sorry I'm doing this off screen because I don't know what's in this folder. Okay, before we can test it though, we need a BT image and it needs... 
table, so we'll switch. And the one that I'm exposing to users I sort of want to make this a little bit more explicit about what it's doing. So I'm going to say ignore cache because I believe in the documentation I mentioned caching somewhere. If not, I need to add it. So then, do, 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 we end up with a source that goes through my source, and here it's a whatever I called it, false refresh. So we'll call image BT source with that. And that should do it. Right. And of course, my taskbar is hiding from me now. Right, so to take advantage of this, I need to actually use those functions that are hidden behind um, the new burnt toast notification function. I think it's just going to be one of those things where when I'm, in fact, let's, let's go down there. There we go. I promise I'll have that uh, a little bit better sorted before um, my next stream. So I have a image. Which is sitting here. Good. And it is called... Josh.png. That is going to be my my app logo, which is going into app logo. Oh, and I this boilerplate here is um, before I made any changes how you would get to exactly the default notification as if you would run new burnt toast notification just using all of the more so what i used to term advanced functions and they're the component functions that actually let you dive a bit deeper into the component um parts of your toast but if i run this now and I should probably stop getting rid of this so I don't have to keep bringing it up. So now that I've got that, doo -doo -doo, run it. So I get my picture. Now, what I'm going to do on the UNC path is I'm going to rename Josh. And change this boy one to Josh. Now, using the old code, because I haven't refreshed this module yet, if I rerun, I still see myself. I 
but if I re-import that and go image uh, ignore cache in fact let's with the new version So that's the new version there. So something. Oh, I'm an idiot. Well, the refresh works. <laughs> um, but I'm always doing the refresh. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So I had hardwired in the ignore cache there, which means it ran every single time. And those brackets are a bit too light in this theme, so I'm going to disable you. That's better. So if I didn't ignore cache, I don't force refresh. That makes some sense, doesn't it? Okay. Of course not. In fact, So now that we've got that working, let's go back the other way. So I run this, I get the boy. Notice it took a second to pop up there. I'm pretty sure that's because it's actually a huge file for some reason. In terms of pictures anyway, it is an 8 megabyte picture. So now if I go back to my original picture, in theory, when I rerun this, still uses the picture of the boy. And here, if I go ignore cache and run it again, it's back to myself. Awesome. Now, I'm going to need to do this... with the URL as well that I can swap out the picture behind or just use Giphy so I'm just finding two random GIFs Not like that, apparently. Du, du, du. Google to the rescue. It's not going to work. Hmm, that's a bugger.
All right, well, how about we do... Come on. All right. Let's just create our own um, URL that we can drop stuff into. So create a quick resource group up in Azure for for this. And of course, the portal wants to go slow on me this morning. Come on. Yeah, actually, no, let's bring it closer to us. Australia East. Testing, yep, put it there. Don't need anything too fast. Sure, 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 sure. Crap. Should be nice and quick in theory. So basically, I'm creating a storage account in Azure, which I'll be able to drop files into. Um, and because I'll do the no-no of making it public, I'll um, be able to just call them directly from my script and then drop in new files on top of old files with the same name and overwrite them so they'll be on the same URL, in theory. So I need a container. This is going to be anonymous read for the blobs and it can be public. I think I put it in lab sources, right? Yep, cool. So we'll start with Josh and upload it. That'll be super quick. And then I should have a URL that I can pop in there. And there's my face, yay. Um, So I can use that as my image path. And I should be able to ignore cache now because it's coming from a different location. So its name in temp will be different. Run that. I get my picture, which means all of this stuff worked and it pulled it through. Now. need to change out to the boy and then 
we upload again. That one, overwrite, upload. And then exactly the same URL, we go there. So now the picture of the boy, which means if we rerun this without the ignore cache, we still get my picture because it's using the version in um, it's still using the version in my temp directory. But if we go ignore cache and dismiss this, we saw a little bit there where it was downloading it, but it's downloaded and now using the local copy of that um, that image. Cool. So that's working for UNC paths and. Um, and URLs, which means I haven't broken anything, fix that issue, and now you can explicitly ignore the cache if you need to update a file. Cool. So I'm going to call that. And I've already forgotten. Oh, it was issue number one one one. Super new. Haven't even logged into GitHub on it yet. So that's pushed. Okay, so that code is now up on GitHub if you want to um, go and check it out. Right, what next? I was actually expecting all of that to take a little bit longer than it did. So, I don't have my to do in here anymore, do I? No. So, what I'll do is I'm going to grab some test code from. Oh, and my taskbar's gone. from wherever I saved it, because of course I put it somewhere that makes a lot of sense. Uh,
So I'll put a bit of a spotlight on what I need to do um, ahead of this presentation that's coming up. First, I need to make sure that I've got temp GIFs, okay. That I put my GIFs in the right location. So, when you show a toast notification, there's a bunch of activities that can happen based off of them. So, if you think of other applications that do do that do use toasts, so you've got like Outlook and messaging apps and the like. Um, if you were to click, say, your Outlook notification for a new email, it would open up that email. So that's a foreground activation that's handled within the Outlook app. Um, and it ties the ID from the toast to an ID of an email, opens up that specific email. Um, or a chat application might have, here's a new message you got then a text box allowing you to type a reply and a reply button. That's all been stuff that I haven't been able to get working via PowerShell for years. Um, but a change coming in PowerShell 7.1 has um, enabled it. In fact, ooh... I'm going to need to change to 7.1. Um, but it means you can register to events like um, did the user click my toast or did they dismiss it? Um, and you can... Uh, and to be clear, you could trigger alerts on clicking a toast or clicking a button before. Or sorry, triggering events. But all you could actually do was pass in a URL to a file and then that would cause Windows to open that file in the default app. So say you could pass in a website and it would open in your default browser, or you pass, pass in, say, this path here, and it would open in IE if that's what your um, GIFs open up in. So it was very limited. What everyone really wanted was, on a click, I want to run some random PowerShell code. And now in PowerShell 7.1, that's possible. So if I swap over to that. There we go. So I'm on PowerShell 7.1.0, preview 6. So what the change was is there's something coming down the line from the .NET team where they're removing support for WinRT. Uh, and in fact, I can show. Show the old behavior. If I have this open still. It would help if I actually installed the thing, wouldn't it? Sorry, installed it under Windows PowerShell because I explicitly installed it for um, PowerShell 7 before. So we've now got a toast sitting in a variable called toast. All right. 
Now what I can try and do is register an event against it. And I'll just leave the action empty because it's not going to do anything. And I'm in the way again. Look at that. So I can register an object an object event against that toast object. The event name being activated. There's only two um, events available there. Activated or uh, dismissed. Actually, sorry. There's three. Activated, dismissed, and failed. Um, although I've never managed to make a toast fail yet, so I haven't really played with that one. But if I try and register this one, I get... PowerShell can't subscribe to WinRT events. That, in theory, is the same if I drop into PowerShell 7.0. I haven't actually tested this in a while, so I might be misremembering things. So I've got my toast again. Let's try and... So PowerShell 7.0 can't do it either. What's cool... Sorry for jumping around. Should have just put it all in one paste. PowerShell 7.1 can... Huzzah! So that means I can do things like this. So this is a toast notification using the same sort of commands that the previous example was. However, I'm including a selection box, which has four items on it that allows you to pick from four different GIFs. Um, so let's go to title, select the GIF, blah, blah, blah. there's a submit button, a dismiss button, and then we get down to this new BT content, and then that's where things sort of start going off the rails a bit, because submit BT notification hides away that object that I need to um, register my event. So instead what I do is I have to manually clean up the XML, I then manually have to go and create the toast notification and then show it later. What I do while I've got the toast notification is I register an activated event against it, meaning that um, I'd picked something. In effect, the user input value, this comes from the selection item box. So if I selected item one, being this Picard face palm, um, then this code runs. So text1 equals that and image equals that. What I do based on that information is I create a new toast. But I use the selected GIF and the selected text somewhere, I assume. Oh, right, I create the text object there. That makes sense. Um, so I create a new toast with that um, and then display the new toast and here's displaying the original toast. So when I run this in PowerShell 7.1 I'm in the way again. Hopefully I can catch it before it disappears. Right, we've got the selection box. So it defaults to Picard Face Palm but I can choose one of these other ones. If I leave it on that, click Submit it disappears and the event fires and I get a second toast. This seems like a really simple um, demo, but it's the it was the point when I had realized we'd finally cracked actionable notifications. So from here you could say have a toast pop up that asks um, there's a new version of this application that you've installed via Chocolatey. Do you want to upgrade? You click yes, and it runs the Chocolatey command. And then it could pop up another toast saying, yep, cool, the upgrade was successful. 
Or maybe whenever you log in, you want it to find a random package that you could install from the chocolatey um, repo. Um, you click install, it installs it, and then um, yeah, tells you when it's done. Uh, maybe even module updates. So, hey, there's a new version of Burnt Toast available. Do you want to upgrade? Yes, it goes off and does it. Um, plenty of things like that. Restarting servers. Basically, anything you can script that you might want a little bit of interaction on. Um, it'll work. Even that text box notification, you can ask for user input. Um, so, like, really simple. Ask for their name. They type it in. They click submit. And then the next toast could pop up saying, hi, Josh, or, you know, whatever. So it was huge. And just to show that it's not smoke and mirrors. Let's run it again, and we'll choose a different GIF, like Seinfeld. Submit. And we get the new GIF. So, the feature that needs to be worked on is exposing the ability to register those events via submit notification and via submit notification and also potentially new burnt toast notification. And I'm in two minds about that. about exposing it on the main new burnt toast notification function because that thing is busy. Um, do I have syntax? No. So there's already a lot of parameters on it, a lot of parameter sets on it. And I worry they're adding more stuff to it. 